Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Hope you're all doing well and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some benchmarks which I conducted on my system in order to test the performance of the all new hardware accelerated GPU scheduling feature with the latest Nvidia drivers and Windows 10 2004 update. This was a video I wanted to make when the feature was launched a couple weeks ago, but never just got around to it with life getting in the way, so I'm a little bit late to the party. However, Nvidia did also release another driver earlier this month as a follow-up, so I decided I might as well wait and test that revision as they'll ho have hopefully ironed out any kinks or bugs. Now you might be wondering what hardware accelerated GPU scheduling or HAGS for short is and how it can possibly impact performance and what kind of benefits it may provide to the user. So coming straight from Microsoft's dev blog, this is what they say about the new feature. Hardware accelerated GPU scheduling enables more efficient GPU scheduling between applications. For most users, this transition will be transparent. It is one of those things that if we do our job right, you will never know the transition even happened. As the graphics platform continues to evolve, this modernization will enable new scenarios in the future. Keyword, future. Over time, we have significantly enhanced the GPU scheduler at the heart of the WDDM, supporting additional features and scenarios with each new WDDM version. For those of you wondering what WDDM is, it stands for Windows Display Driver Model. However, throughout its evolution, one aspect of the scheduler was unchanged. We have always had a high priority thread running on the CPU that coordinates, prioritizes, and schedules the work submitted by various applications. This approach to scheduling the GPU has some fundamental limitations in terms of submission overhead, as well as latency for the work to reach the GPU. With hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, this changes the way it handles instruction output, to the GPU where instead of relying on one main high priority thread from the CPU, the GPU can now manage its own resources itself such as the GPU memory and Windows continues to control prioritization and decides which applications have priority among contexts. We offload high frequency tasks to the GPU scheduling processor handling quantum management and context switching of various GPU engines. In theory, this should reduce overhead resulting in less latency. However, Microsoft do state that when turning this feature on, the user shouldn't notice any major changes or expect any significant uplifts to performance. And really, that was what prompted me to conduct some benchmarks and make this video and Spoiler alert, you're not going to be seeing any major FPS improvements, however I thought it'd still be worth checking out in case we did see any surprises. Although I did have one interesting scenario that did occur which you'll see later on in this video. If you guys want to read the entire dev blog post, I'll link it down in the video description. Moving on, if you're wondering how you can enable this hardware accelerated GPU scheduling feature, there are some requirements you'll need to fulfill. First off, you're going to have to be using the latest Windows 10 2004 update, as this version of Windows is the build that includes this feature. Previous versions of Windows 10 do not. After that, you need to make sure you're using NVIDIA GeForce drivers version 451.48, or AMD Radeon Beta Drivers version 20.5.1. However, for this video, I'm actually using GeForce Drivers 451.67. After you've gone ahead and updated your OS along with your GPU drivers, enabling HAGS is actually quite simple. Just for search for graphics settings in your Windows 10 search bar, it will open up a window and right at the top you'll see the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling feature. Simply enable it and then restart your PC for it to apply the settings and that's it. Now before we move on to the gaming benchmarks, let's quickly go over the system specs. For the CPU, we've got a Ryzen 9 3900X, a 12 core processor, running stock, so no static overclocks or PBO with auto OC. The CPU is cooled by a Noctua NHD15 dual tower air cooler. For the RAM, we've got 16GB of G-Skill Trident Z, clocked at 3666MHz with CL14 tune timings. The motherboard we'll be using for our testing is the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. In regards to the BIOS, I'm using the Agiza 1003 ABBA update. The graphics card is an EVGA RTX 2080, which is water-cooled by a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler. For the power supply, we've got an EVGA 750G2, and for the case housing all these components is a Corsair Air 740 with lots of airflow provided. Since the specs are all out of the way now, let's jump into these gaming benchmarks. 
First up, we've got Far Cry 5, and at 1080p, we're pretty much looking at identical performance, regardless of whether or not hardware accelerated GPU scheduling was on. The experience here would be exactly the same. You'll be seeing this as a recurring theme for the rest of the benchmarks. When we raise the resolution to 1440p and put most of the load on the GPU to see if anything changes here, and well, nothing really happens. Performance is pretty much exactly the same. But that's just one game, let's move on to Hitman 2. And the results here are, well, also the same. To nobody's surprise. This is probably one of the most boring benchmarking videos I've ever done, and it's also why I decided to only benchmark a handful of games, rather than the usual 10 to 15 titles, as you'd pretty much be seeing graphs that have the same uh, performance figures and it would be a very very boring long video. At 1440p and the results for Hitman 2 are pretty much the same, same as what we saw with Far Cry 5. The next game we have is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At both resolutions 1080p and 1440p we can see similar performance figures between no HAGS and with HAGS. This was definitely one of the more demanding games to come out in the recent couple of years. So if there was a way to get some kind of performance uplift with a feature like this, that would have been nice, but as the results show, there's really nothing to it otherwise. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is up next, and this is a pretty demanding open world title, and at 1080p, the performance between the two configurations is pretty much within margin of error. When bumping up the resolution to 1440p, we can see that the average frame rate and 1% lows are relatively the same. However, we do see a bump when it comes to the 0.1% lows. However, it's not something to write home about, so let's move on. The Division 2 is next on our list of games, and here at 1080p we see a slight performance regression with hardware accelerated GPU scheduling enabled, but as you'll see when the resolution is bumped up to 1440p, we can see the results are actually very very close to each other, not noticeable at all, with the 1% lows just ahead ever so slightly with HAGS enabled. Now the next title I want to include in my benchmark suite was F1 2018, as I always like to include some kind of racing title. However, when I mentioned I ran into an interesting occurrence, this is what I was talking about. With hardware accelerated GPU scheduling enabled, the game would just straight up crash when launching into a race. Not sure why, as to why that was, I could navigate through the menus, set different options, set race and benchmark parameters, but as soon as we could actually get into a race, some gameplay, the game would immediately just crash. I'm actually glad this did happen because it just goes to show that while this new feature aims to improve performance or reduce driver overhead, it's not perfect yet and there are some fundamental game breaking bugs present. In conclusion, while hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is an intriguing feature, it doesn't impact performance in any positive way as of yet and could potentially cause some game breaking issues. Now I only ran into the issue with this one game so far but who knows how many other games are out there that could straight up not function with the feature enabled, whereas with traditional scheduling methods the game will just work as normal without issues. But this doesn't mean we should just write off the feature as useless because if you actually go and read the dev vlog there are some key points they mentioned that might have to be properly implemented from the developer's side to fully see the merits of this feature, and they'll probably be working on it as updates come along, they'll work with GPU manufacturers, with Nvidia and AMD to improve the drivers, so I have no doubt in my mind that we have they're just probably scratching the surface with this feature, as the feature does seem like the step in the right direction in theory. So being curious about new tech, I thought I'd run some benchmarks and show you guys the results. So if you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Check out the video description for all the other hardware tested. There will be links for that. You can also use my affiliate links as well if you want to support the channel. And if you're interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys in the next one.